Good morning. Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. And of course, you got here just in time. That's right. It's the first Saturday in February. And that means Dillo Days. We're back out here at Lake Whitney State Park, Horseshoe Loop. That's where all the action is happening. Of course, it's been raining, so everything is wet. But we, I expected that, so put up a big tarp to keep all the, the stuff dry. And we actually were hanging out here talking in the sideways rain last night. Had a, had a trailer load of wood brought in so that everybody could get wood. Any profits helps out wounded war the helps out the wounded warrior project. Here shortly, everyone will be showing up for the the giveaway and potluck lunch. We'll have some time lapse for it. This exact same site I was in last year. Keeping things simple. The horseshoe loop at Lake Whitney is an awful connection. It's in desperate need. The road is in desperate need of resurfacing though. Maybe they'll get around to it. This is actually site number 28, in case you're wondering. All right, stay tuned, more to come. We are gathered here today to give away the stuff. What do you think, James? Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. <laughs> Food is arriving. <laughs> Smells so good over here. I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> Hurry, hurry, hurry! Our master of ceremonies must begin doing his thing. I only know this because when you're sitting around in the dark and, and outside, if you wave out to somebody, they all wave back. So when it's uh, light outside, they rarely do. Unless it's Mark or James, and they're just going to pretend like they don't see you and keep watching. I, I'm going to interrupt. Oh, because, go ahead. Because I, I think everybody here has got the same question. When is the tractor pull? <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to do the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Well, I always do the informal one first, and then. <laughs> hey, welcome to Dillo Days. That's where we celebrate Dude RV because he's such a great guy, and he does these giveaways and plans this stuff out. And, Appreciate the heck out of that. And I, I don't have anything else good to say about it. Um, <laughs> this is the nicest day we've had since we've been here, and I'm probably overdressed. But I want you guys all to know that I exercise a lot, and my wife had to buy me this T-shirt because... I fall down often, so <laughs> I decided to wear it for today. Oh, you know what else I have to wear today? This is for James. James, will you want to tell him about the octopus? So uh, James was watching a video, and uh, Lance from Canada, if you guys remember him, he couldn't make it this year, but uh, he decided that he found these octopus stuffed animals, and James commented about him not being a cheapskate and not buying it, buying one of those for my head. So he didn't. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no shame in your game. Oh my but Jody did. <laughs> you finally have hair! I know, isn't that great? <laughs> Alright, All right. so... Um, I'm sure all of you have the same thoughts that I do, and that's that all these Alexas and Siri's and Googles are all listening to us all the time, right? Well, we got a story about how we know that's true. Jody and I were on a trip, and we're going to Arizona. And partway there, we got somewhere between New Mexico and Arizona, and it was getting dark outside, and so we just had to find a place to boondock. And so we found a place to park. 
shut everything down, getting ready for bed. And Jody goes, I wonder where the hell we are. And as soon as she said that, one of the devices went off and said, BFE has been found in the middle of nowhere. Thanks, we're updating our database. And I said, BFE, honey, what does that mean? And she said, not a bubble, baby maker, Egypt. By the way, all the different ways to RV, you have to admit that boondockers have it made because they are the world's best hide and go sleep. Uh, slipper. Uh, so here's one. So after that, we started a, we stayed at a uh, park along the way, and this old couple parked next to us, and uh, they were brand new RVers, and we had only been RVers for like a month, so I knew everything already. So, <laughs> this guy comes over and he says, hey, uh, I can't get my water to work. So, it's like, um, well, I'm kind of new at this, but we'll go look at it together. And this guy's probably about, you know, 75 or so, and he and his wife just decide they're going to start RVing. So, we go over there and we're looking, and I'm looking at all his settings and everything, and I go, let's go back to the... So, we started working our way backwards. Instead of me being smart enough to start where the water starts... He had one of those little angle cocks, and it was <laughs> shut on off. And I said, if you aim it toward the hose, the water will go through. And he goes, boy, that's technical. <laughs> so and he, he made me feel better. Um, but anyway, so they decided to ask if we'd like to eat with them. And we're like, okay. So Jody makes this great jambalaya and uh, puts all this good food together. And they come over with beans and huge onion chunks sitting in the beans. I thought, okay, so I'm going to eat beans today for sure. We'll get more to that later. Uh, uh, so we had our meal, and then his wife went back to the RV to do the dishes or whatever, and Jody, being the sweet person she is and keeping the conversation going, goes, so what do you do? And yes, he was still working. He says, oh, do you really want to know? And I'm looking at her going. <laughs> and she goes, and he goes, well, sure, why not? And so uh, turns out, he says, we make stripper clothes. Well, that's interesting. And so Jody goes, oh, my gosh. Now, remember, my wife tries to be sweet to everybody, so she had to say something nice. So she goes, oh, my gosh. That must be a really hard job. You had to make everything so small, and it's got to come off so easy. You're not going to demonstrate that, or you like that. No, you already started. There was a full moon yesterday. Yes. So, we, we, he brings us over to his trunk of this Lincoln, whatever giant car that they drive separate. Opens the trunk, and here's these giant photo books. I mean, huge photo albums of all the stuff they made with people modeling them. Now, here's the funny part. Fair enough. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Well, we're not leaving yet because here comes the trash guy. He's got to come over and look at it. And here comes the park ranger, and they've got to come over. Next thing you know, they're all sitting there trying to, trying to look over each other, looking at all these pictures. I mean, they look like giraffes. You know, just lift, lifting, lifting their heads up, trying to look over at every picture because they don't want to miss one. So, uh, all I can say is that was a very uncomfortable moment because we couldn't get away because there were so many people around us. <laughs> Did you like the pictures, honey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had pictures of every kind of person you can think of. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so we had an accident about three years ago, and we were stuck in a hotel while our RV was getting fixed right when COVID started and everything shut down. They couldn't get parts, so we were just stuck there. Oddly enough, the only room we could get in town was right next door to a drug dealer. So at all, he was really quiet, great neighbor, but everybody that came by couldn't figure out which room was his, so they would knock on our door at all hours a day. And we often got asked, uh, hey, do you know if he's got, no, I don't know. <laughs> we're not holding for him either, just in case you were curious. 
So I made an escape video when we finally got cut loose of that hotel. And uh, I was doing a uh, Animal House John Belushi scene where I was trying to sneak out of the hotel to the RV so Jody could drive us off in the sunset. So I was doing these kinds of things. You know, jumping over these little bushes and trying not to fall into that cactus because, you know, I'm not that agile. About that time, this lady comes out of her room on the first floor. And she goes, oh, hey, are you from the news? I'm in shorts, tennis shoes, running over plants, and she wanted to know if I'm from the news. And I said, uh, no. She goes, well, I said, did you want me to interview you? She goes, do I have time to fix my hair? And I'm looking at her clothes, and would you believe she's wearing Jerry Springer pajamas? White ones with Jerry Springer all over them. So I asked her a few questions. You know, I was like, uh, so how long have you been here? Do you feel safe at this hotel? Because I'm thinking, we sure didn't. Well, all the stuff is gone. The tables are empty. That worked out good, that, that, that is much. So we <laughs> no more stuff. Nobody left empty handed. The feast was magnificent. I discovered after a while that there was uh, something sticky on the side uh -oh. here. And some of the things were almost done. Actually, it is done. How amazing is this? The sun came out just in time <laughs> so uh, the, yesterday turned out to be another beautiful day so if you didn't make it to dillo days 2024 plan on making it to dillo days 2025 it was such a it's just a, such a cool thing so so many great people it just leaves me speechless for all of you that attended Dillo Days, thank you. I, I'm, I'm so honored to call you a friend. All right, we're not done with this video just yet. And J RV Adventures, R, R and J, RV Adventures. All right, so we are out here with Dude RV. We came here for Dillo Days. This is our first event with his community, and we had an absolute blast. Um, so what we want to ask you, dude, is this is your third event now, right? Well, okay, third structured event? Technically, it would be the fourth event. Fourth, okay. My apologies. No, 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 that's all right. <laughs> so tell me how this all got started, your, your Dillo days, your buzzer days. So I have been documenting public campgrounds. started doing it about 2014 just public campgrounds I, I, I never camp private campgrounds uh, I found a huge lack of information for myself when I was planning trips and so I felt that if I needed more information. Others probably needed more information as far as what, what do the parks look like? What do the sites look like? Do you even want to go there? Uh, and so I started journaling, video journaling, the stuff in the campgrounds. And people found value there and started subscribing. Uh, I, I never set out to create a community. I just wanted to have a, a a resource for the RVer, especially in the in Texas. I'm a huge fan of Texas State Parks, and I decided to make create a mission or set the mission of documenting all the Texas State Parks where I could take my motor home. I'm I have disability issues, and found there's a huge lack of communication uh, for the disabled person. So I felt that I was the put on mission to help other disabled people go camping. And along the way, people started following and finding value. And over the last couple of years, we're, we're now at about 95% of the, have, I've 
at this point I've documented about 95% of all the public campgrounds in Texas. And it's reached the, it had reached the point where anytime I would post a video, I would have a number of comments from the subscriber base asking when we were going to do a meetup. When are we going to get together? They want to they want to camp with me. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. <laughs> that is this. I'm a kind of a yeah. I'm on YouTube, but I'm an introvert. Yep. I'm not a I'm not a public kind of person. Uh, so last year in, I don't know, in the middle of the summer, the hottest part of the year, I posted a video and, there, and I had a dozen comments of that nature. When are you going to do a meetup? When are you going to do an event? And to shut everybody up, basically, <laughs> I said, all right, we're going to do a, we're going to meet up at the worst possible time of the year to go camping. Because I'm a hardcore I, weather, I'll camp in whatever weather. I don't care if it's rain, snow, flea. If I can drive, I'm camping. So my birthday's February 2nd. Let's do it the first weekend in February. If you want to camp with me, first weekend in February is when we're doing it. And people showed up. I mean, we, we are at Lake Whitney. State Park. We are in the full connection loop. It's the horseshoe loop. There are 41 sites. Last year we had about 25 of those reserved. Literally, as soon as I announced, people were were reserving sites. So then we had an ice storm blow in. So we we lost uh, probably 10 to 15 people. They they just couldn't make it because of the weather. We still had a huge crowd, and it was definitely wasn't what I was expecting. What I found was the people who were watching me were pretty much just like me, mm -hmm. and it was almost immediately uh, a, more of a family reunion, friends never met kind of situation. We just all uh, and. The, at, toward the end of that gathering, everyone was like, when are we going to do this again? This was so incredible. When are we going to do this again? So following that hardcore RVer theme, I said, hottest part of the year. We do it the coldest part of the year, now we're going to do the hottest part of the year. So we were at Ham Creek, which is just right here on Lake Whitney, for uh, buzzard days. We had Dillo days. I, could, I called it Dillo days. For, for a couple reasons, but one of them is when you're camping this time of year, about the only life wildlife you see are armadillos. And then there's also the the Groundhog Day thing. My birthday is February 2nd. My whole life, I've been hearing about this stupid marmot up in Pennsylvania that predicts the weather. How can that fat little marmot in Pennsylvania predict the weather in Texas? The armadillo, on the other hand, can predict the weather in Texas, right? The uh, Texas meteorologist can't even predict the weather in Texas. Right. How's a fat marmot in Pennsylvania going to do that? <laughs> uh, so it was just kind of a play on that, that, that the, the name Dillo Days evolved. So when we decided to do the second one, I, I needed to keep with that same theme. And when it's 115 degrees outside, the only thing you see moving are the vultures riding the thermals. And even sometimes it gets too hot for them. Yep. So I, we'll call it buzzard days, and that's D-A-Z-E, not D-A-Y-S. The Dillo days and the buzzard days. The third one was for the, uh, the annular eclipse. It wasn't a huge thing. We, just, we all decided to go to Canyon yeah. Lake. And camp for the eclipse. Well, I'll tell you, you definitely have some hardcore followers, especially uh, those of us that were under the tent in the middle of the thunderstorm. Now that's a memory you'll never forget. Never will. An experience you can't have anywhere else. <laughs> Raining sideways. Oh yeah. <laughs> Soaked to the bone.
Yeah, well, we, we definitely enjoyed meeting everybody here, and uh, we're going to try and be to Buzzard Days this year. That's our plan, and that's the last weekend of August? Correct. And that's going to be at Cleburne State Park? Cleburne State Park. All right. We, we have reserved, because last summer uh, we, we were in an open pavilion, and it was really hot, and a, a lot of the... A lot of people were they were really struggling with the heat. Yes. Uh, so we decided to, to go someplace where, yeah, we're still camping in the heat, but we're going to have our our potluck. And at the events, uh, I have companies sending me products every day. Uh, we're about to go full time in the RV, so I don't I don't have any space for stuff. So at the event we give it away and we need a location to do that and so this year we will be holding the event the the event indoors at the group pavilion at Cleburne State Park the events I, I wish the hardcore people like myself we show up on Thursday uh, and we drink coffee and sit around the fire and just commune and then on Saturday we give away the stuff and have a big potluck meal and yeah, just be merry. Well Ron and I when we started our journey you know we uh, my best friend that got us into camping by the time we got a camper he was too busy to camp so we had to go out and make our own friends and whatnot and along the way we've come to several different meetups you know and one thing that's common is most RVers are like-minded the way we view life, the world. Correct. And it's almost an instant kinship when you talk with these people. Friends unmet. Absolutely. So, you know, we come in as pseudo friends online and we leave as family. Yep. That's, so. And that was what my wife and I experienced for us. Because, you know, we, we meet people on the road and it's, especially since I started doing the videos, total strangers coming up and talking to us and we, we meet them but the event really drove it home for us that we actually have a much larger family than we realized mm -hmm. we typically most RVers most campers are kind of a introvert you know you know you get to your campsite and you're just okay I'm just here doing my own little yep. thing the reality is the camper right next door they're thinking the exact same thing that you're thinking <laughs> so Absolutely. they're friends that you haven't met yet and if you open up a dialogue with them you find that holy cow this is my brother and one thing that somebody had taught us a long time ago is you know if you have extra chairs put them out at your campsite most people will see that stop talk to you you know yep make the effort be open and it'll happen build a campfire where they can see you oh yeah Especially one of your campfires, you can see that quite a ways away. You know, if you're gonna have a campfire for a group of people, you need to have a campfire for a group of people. Well, those little pro, those little propane fireplaces, they don't put off any heat. <laughs> well, they're nice to travel with, <laughs> especially when there's a burn ban. Especially when there's a burn ban in Texas in the summer time. Well, dude, thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate it. We had a blast this weekend, and looking forward to doing. It again this summer, hopefully, in the air conditioning, that'll be nice. So. Well, I want to say thank you to, to you and your family for coming and, and joining our family. Uh, it's it's just, it touches my heart that people actually want to come camp with Dude RV. I still think it's kind of weird, <laughs> but I, I dig it though. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is weird, you know, when you think of the grand scheme of things, but. Yep. You know, in this world, all we have is each other, right? This is also true. And every day is a new day. You never know what's going to happen. And having some friends that might be able to help you along the way is not a bad thing. And it, it, with this community, one of the things that's, that just blows my mind is that everyone is so willing to ready, ready, willing, and desires to step up and help their neighbor. Absolutely. And everyone that has that I've met in this community uh, they've all ex say the exact same thing if you're in my area and you need help call me yep 
if, even if you don't need help, call me. Let me know you're in my area so we can get together and socialize or something. Mm -hmm. And we heard that a lot yesterday, talking to meeting new people. Yep. Hey, you're down by Humble. Look me up. So that's a great thing. Well, again, thank you, sir, and uh, we look thank forward to you. next time. And we'll see you down the road. My phone's ringing. And just like that, we're at Tranquility Base. I got an issue I got to deal with. <laughs> if, if we're going to be here full time, I must improve upon my RV pad. Oh, how to. There have been a quite a few of y'all that have been wanting to know how things are progressing out here at Tranquility Base. So I thought I would include that in this video. You can see not much has happened. Grass has come in real good, so we don't have as much erosion going on. The pile of brush is about ready to burn, nice and dry. That's gonna make a big old, big old bonfire. And the only thing that's changed in the green box is I added another tier of shelves on that end. That's your update. Well, not quite all of it. So the plan is for us to have the, the other house on the market. I had a boss said a couple weeks, when we get back from this trip. So she's, she's back. I'm not sure what, what time frame she has in mind. Hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. We'll be full-time in Trudy while we deal with getting dried in on the barn, the barn dough. Meanwhile, I'm headed back down to Houston again. <laughs> I was just down there last weekend. Uh, it seems that, well, I'm, I'm not gonna go into a rant about Lippert at this time there's there's lots of lippert issues going on but i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap this up. not much of a video thank you so much for watching i truly appreciate all of y'all who follow this channel if you're not following you really want to click on that subscribe button and remember to hit the bell as well that way you'll never miss another edition of the dude rv traveling roadshow if you found some value, I, it would really help me if you'd post a comment down there. Doesn't matter what you say. Just please post a comment, click the thumbs up button, and thank you. I most appreciate that. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. That way it'll push the videos out to another set of, another audience. And for our patrons, we are so eternally grateful to, for your generosity. Thank you so much. You guys rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?